Hello, and welcome to our science web series, brought to you by sciencehook.com. Today, we'll learn about the concept behind computer's chess game, its basic algorithm, and logic. A human chess player starts with very limited abilities, each defeat comes as something of a surprise, and learning. For a human being therefore, the game of chess involves a great deal of high-level abstract thought, visual pattern matching, to recall board positions, rules and guidelines, conscious thought and even psychology. Computers do none of this. Chess requires intelligence and thought process, so how can a computer possibly do it? A computer that is playing chess is not thinking. Instead, it is calculating through a set of formulas that makes it to take good moves. Let's go through this, step by step. Step 1, Constructing a Tree. Let's say you've chessboard set up, with each player having 16 pieces. And it's computer's turn playing with white pieces. Now, the computer can make one of 20 possible moves, to each for the 8 pawns, plus to each for the knights. And, in response to any of those moves, the opponent can make 20 possible moves. So, with starting two moves into the game, we have 20 times 20 equals 400 possible set of outcomes. Let's assume that the computer has 20 ways to respond to that opponent's move, to each of these 400 scenarios, which makes 400 multiplied by 20 available legal moves at the end of the third move. This way, the process will go on. It thinks about it in the world of all possible moves, up to its program depth, and it makes a big tree for all of those moves. In theory, the perfect computer would be able to get to the very bottom of this tree, and look at all possible configurations of the board, approximately 10 to the power of 120. Then it would see which are the paths down this tree that lead to its victory, and choose accordingly. Step 2. Evaluating the outcomes. There is a big problem. 10 to the power of 120 is a very huge number. For example, there have only been 10 nanoseconds since the Big Bang. There are thought to be only 10 to the power of 75 atoms in the entire universe. When you consider that, the Milky Way galaxy contains billions of suns, and there are billions of galaxies, you can see that that's a whole lot of atoms. That number is dwarfed by the number of possible chess moves. We'd be sitting around waiting for the damn thing to make its move, till the universe ended. So, what real computers do is build up this tree to the best of their hardware capabilities, 5, 10, 20, for whatever moves into the future. Once they have this limited tree, they evaluate each position using an evaluation function. For a really simple example, an evaluation function could be the number of pieces the computer has minus the number of pieces the opponent has. For example, the computer has 10 pieces left on the board, the opponent has only 8. Then the computer would evaluate such a board to 10 minus 8 equals 2. Of course, that's not a very good evaluation function, but you get the idea. This can be made more and more complicated, taking into account the value of individual pieces, board position, control of the center, vulnerability of the king to check, vulnerability of the opponent's queen, and tons of other parameters. Step 3. Making a move. The analysis is done. It's time to make a decision. Let's make up a simplified tree. The computer, playing as white, has to decide its move. It constructs the tree above and applies what is called the Minimax algorithm. It starts from the bottom, assuming third level here, and chooses the one with the maximum score. Consider the leftmost circle in the second level. It has two possible outcomes, 2 and 8. Since it will be the computer's turn at that stage, it chooses the best outcome, that is, the one with maximum score, which is 8, and so it assigns 8 to that node. Similarly for all the nodes in the second level. Now, for the second level, the outcome is decided by the opponent, since at that time it will be Black's turn. The computer assumes that Black will make the move which is best for Black, and so the worst for White, hence it chooses the setups with minimum score. For example, for the center node on the first level, there are three possibilities, 9, 5, and 9. The computer assumes black will take the one that leaves the computer weakest, and that is, 5. So, the first level nodes are all given values. Finally, 
The first level is the computer's turn, so it makes the choice with maximum score, that is, 7. There are many other functions to evaluate the moves. Minimax is just one of them. By applying a technique called alpha-beta pruning, the algorithm can run about twice as fast and requires a lot less memory. As you can see, this process is completely mechanical and involves no thought. It is simply a brute force calculation that applies an evaluation function to all possible board configurations. Thus the computer climbs the tree, alternatively choosing minimum and maximum scores, thus the name Minimax, and makes the choice that leaves it best off in the end. The better the hardware, the deeper the depth of a tree it can analyze, and so the better its chances of winning. Which is why computers couldn't usually beat humans in the 1960s, but now are regularly able to thrash grandmasters. So, that's all about logic behind computer chess. Please like, and subscribe our channel, and don't forget to share this video.